and hello YouTube, this is GS Man of Smart, and I'm going to tell you another brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're taking a look at After Effects and how to create a very simple but pretty cool and awesome looking uh, picture falling effect here in After Effects. It's very easy to do, it's not very difficult. We're not going to be using any crazy expressions. There is a way to do this with random seed and with wiggle and certain expressions like that, which can make things a bit more random. I'm going to be showing you how to do it uh, the simple way and how to customize it to really, to really the way you want it to look and without there being any uh, randomness in it. However, if you want to see how to generate random positions and all that stuff, I definitely recommend you to Google up random seed expression as well as the wiggle expression, how to use uh, sliders and uh, uh, different controls and different control expressions. I do have one video on how to use control expressions when we did the camera shake video. So uh, you'll probably see, if you wanna watch that video, you'll probably see us use that and maybe you'll be a little familiar with it. Otherwise, it's, it's, it isn't too difficult to use. So what we're gonna first do is create a new composition. So I'll go up to composition here, a new composition. And uh, we're gonna use a 1920 by 1080. You can really use anything you want. And uh, as for composition length, 10 seconds is fine. We just wanna show you how to do this. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create a solid background, which is going to be our, basically kind of like our table where the pictures are falling on top of. Now you can pick whatever color you want. Make sure you go up to layer though, go to new and go to solid. Now, if you have a texture, you can use a texture too. Say you have a wooden texture. You can use that just fine. Uh, just be aware it has to be a really big texture because you may have to scale it up some. And you don't want it, and you don't want it to be pixelated. But we're gonna go ahead and create a solid background and we picked a nice gray here. Uh, you can use anything like I said, go ahead and press okay. Make sure it's the same size as your composition. Go ahead and press okay. And uh, now that you have your background or if you're using a texture, you have a texture, then you wanna make sure you click 3D layer here. Make this a 3D layer because that's what we want. And after that, we're gonna go and right click here and we're gonna create new, go to camera and make sure that you have the settings of blur level of 200%, aperture of 1.40. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's kind of everything we need. Make sure also that depth of field is on as well. And go and press okay. And then we're gonna create something else. Go right click again, click new again. And we're gonna create a new light this time. Now this light, make sure you have it as white. Make sure intensity is at least at 100%. You can make this bigger if you'd like. Make sure cast shadows is also set to on. And shadow darkness is gonna be how dark you want shadows to be on any object you place in this composition. 200% is fine. You can make it uh, darker than that, but I wouldn't put it any lower than this because it's kind of hard to see shadows then. So 200 is fine. And you can go ahead and press okay as well. And we get this nice looking environment here. Now, if for some reason, uh, it doesn't look like this for you. It's because you have not set the 3D layer for the background. Otherwise, it'll look like that and you won't notice a difference. So you gotta make sure you hit 3D here. After that, what we're gonna do is grab our camera position. Go ahead and toggle down the camera here with a little switch here. Then go to transform and then grab your position here. Just go ahead and click the position here. Go ahead and press Control C or Command C on the Mac to copy that position and then paste it onto the light. And all you gotta do is Control V or Command V and that will paste the position of the camera and give it the same position to the light. That way we get this nice looking uh, light here. It's right in the center here. So from here on, we basically have our background. Now, uh, what you wanna do is import your pictures. What I have here is actually three pictures that I have designed. Well, not really designed, just converted into Polaroid. Well, kind of, not really Polaroid because it's really a photo print effect. If you wanna learn how to make these photo print effects here, I do have a tutorial on how to do this in GIMP. It's very easy to do. Uh, just make sure if you're, if you're following that tutorial, do not add a drop shadow because if you add a drop shadow, it's gonna, it's gonna mess the composition up here. So don't add a drop shadow, but I think like for the first three minutes of that tutorial, I go over on how to add a border like this and how to add decor and stuff like that. So I do recommend you to watch that video if you don't know how to do it. Very easy though, it's not very, not very difficult. So these are the three pictures that I'm gonna be using. Yes, they're all of Riven from League of Legends, kind of lame, but <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. So. Uh, what you're gonna do now from here on is just go ahead and pick a picture that you want and we're gonna work with, say we're gonna work, let's work with this one right here and just go ahead and drag it underneath your camera and underneath your light. So right on top of your solid here. 
Now you're gonna wanna, head, wanna go ahead and make this a 3D layer as well. So go ahead and press the 3D button right here. By the way, if you don't see these, if you don't see these buttons right here, if you don't see the 3D stuff right here, uh, make sure you click toggle switches here because you'll either see this and you won't see the 3D stuff. So you gotta make sure you click toggle switches here and this switches between the switches. This switches between the switches. So that's a tongue twister. So make sure your solid, your background and your picture are 3D. And then go ahead and press AA. Just go ahead and tap the A key twice and it will bring up the material options. Make sure you have uh, cast shadow set to on. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and go to your, your background, your solid or your texture, whatever you're using as a background. Go ahead and uh, toggle it down and toggle transformation down. And then in the position, you'll see an X, Y, Z here. So this is X, this is Y, this is Z. Make sure for Z, you type in something like one. Uh, you can put something like two, three, four, or five, any low value will do. But this will basically bring that nice shadow there uh, underneath the picture there. If we zoom in, there's a nice shadow, which is exactly what we want. But one is just fine. And after that, we can basically animate our picture how we want it to fall now because we have this as a 3d layer we can basically move it left right up down uh, close far away all that kind of cool stuff and we're gonna do some rotation work as well now if your picture is too big like mine is here all you gotta do is press one of these little uh, boxes at the bottom hold down the shift key and you can just make it smaller if you need it smaller and we're gonna make it about that size right there now how you want to keyframe this is toggle down your picture here your picture layer here and go to transform and basically here is where you're going to be working with your rotation and your uh, position so your positions here your, your scale we're not gonna be working with really but your Z rotation don't work with the X or the Y rotation because they're basically gonna make your picture look weird so Z rotation uh, this will basically determine how you want the photo to fall in which orientation so if, if I want to make it fall like that then I'll just keep it like that and then for your position here the only thing we're really gonna be working with is uh, the Z however you can change the other values if you wanted to for example if you wanted to move more up you can change the second value here if you want it to move to the left or to the right you can move the first value here but essentially the real effect is in changing the Z position here so the Z position is what we're gonna animate uh, essentially you want to go ahead the first thing you want to do is, is change your X and your Y to where you want the picture to land and then you go ahead and grab your Z position here I think this is position yeah so here's your Z and going from negative 2000 this will basically bring the picture uh, behind the camera so make sure you hit the keyframe here as well after you've selected to negative 2000 make sure you hit the keyframe here and then uh, just decide how long do you want this effect to last? How long do you want the picture to fall? And I think we're gonna go ahead and let it fall right around here. So maybe about one second I want to take about one second for the picture to fall and then from here We're gonna change the uh, Z to about negative 100 and What was the original value of that was that was it zero before? Oh Yeah, it was zero so uh, you can put negative 100, but Putting it to zero wouldn't be a bad idea either. If you if you want to if you ever want to change a value of a keyframe, just go ahead and double click the keyframe here, and you can easily change the value here. So there we go. And now if we were to play this back like that. Uh, it needs to render through actually first. Depending on how how fast your computer is, this will render in various amounts of speeds. But as you see, the picture is falling down slowly, and we have this nice. 3D effect where the light is actually interacting with the photo and we get the drop shadow and it just falls down like so. So there we go. Now we can go and do a nice preview like that. Now if you ever want it to go a little faster, a little slower, you can always um, drag this keyframe here. Say you want it to go quicker, you can drag it forward like so and it will actually fall down a lot quicker than before. And if you want it to go slower, you just drag it forward perhaps to two seconds. If it takes two seconds for the picture to drop, then that's fine as well. So here, it, it comes down fairly quickly. So after that, essentially you can do the exact same thing with all the other pictures. Say I have this picture right here. I wanna go ahead and drag it into the composition like so. 
And what I like to do is to make sure my pictures are the same size, I actually like to go to my uh, original picture that I placed in the first picture. I copy the scale, go to scale, go and copy this. And then I just go and go to the new picture and paste. And that will scale the picture down to the exact same size. Make sure you're always making this a new 3D layer as well. Don't forget to do that. And then we can basically just do the exact same thing. We can go to transform again. And where do we want this picture to land? Well, I kind of want it to land over perhaps over here. I want it to land. And how do I want the orientation to be? How do I want it to land? Probably maybe something like something like that, like so. And then all I got to do is animate the uh, Z position. Now, when do I want it to start falling? Do I want it to start falling? right around here when the picture is about to land. I say right around there, right before it's about to land. And what you can also do, you can open up your previous picture right here and you'll see when it lands, it lands right around here. So I wanted to start falling right before. And let me just fit up to 100% again. So note that we are taking, how long is this taking to fall? This is taking about 18 frames. So. If I wanted to start right here, you can, make this, you can make this as accurate as you want to have like, oh, 18 frames for this picture, 18 frames for the next picture, or you can just do it randomly just by eye. And um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start making it fall here. So once again, in our position here, we're gonna, we're gonna put the first keyframe here and we're gonna make this at negative 2000 as we did. And that will place it behind the camera. And then say right now we are at 11 frames so 18 frames in I'd say it's about uh, right, right at about a second I would say like so and then from here we're gonna go ahead and change this to uh, well zero again like so and then if we were to go and RAM preview this real quick so just finished RAM previewing here is our finished product like so and it looks really cool and you can add as many pictures as you want and you can add as many different crazy rotations and all this kind of stuff is keyframing is really cool in after effect and so it's a really neat little thing to do that can really make your project stand out you can do all kinds of crazy things so after that you want to keep on adding new pictures changing uh the, the rotation and changing the position and make sure you always uh click the 3d icon here and then you should be done and you're basically you have your little project and you can add some text made at the bottom here saying like, oh, my collage or something look cool like that. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. It's a very simple thing to do and it's it's it's, it's good practice if you're new to After Effects because you do, you do work with cameras and lights and with different layers and with solids and different effects and with keyframing. It's a really nice beginner tutorial if you're new to After Effects. So if you have any questions or comments, any feedback, any, any way to make this even cooler, even better, and actually what we forgot to do is make sure you also always go to your material options and make sure that you cast your shadows because we did not cast shadows here. That's something you also want to do. So make sure you make sure you press a 3D layer and make sure you also cast shadows and uh, then you should be okay. So like I was saying, any questions or comments, leave down in the comment box below. I'll definitely be down there answering questions you may have. And if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful or you've seen some of my other videos and found those helpful such as my GIMP guides, such as my Photoshop tutorials, Audacity tutorials, or any of the other videos, you can go ahead and donate a dollar to my Patreon. Anything as low as that is always helpful and is always very much appreciated. All you gotta do is click the card at the top right corner of the screen and it'll take you to the page. I also have a tutorials channel which is this one right here, a gaming channel, music channel, advice channel, and a vlogging channel if you want to check all that stuff out. Links are in the description as well as on the end card. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, as always. And this is GS Man of Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.